Tonight on CBS 6 News, starting at 5, just days after their 11-year-old was shot and killed on a Troy street, the victim's mother and father tell their side of the story. They should open a lot of eyes. This is ridiculous. And it's word families across the region have been waiting for New York announcing new relaxed visitation rules for nursing homes all at 5. A bullet hole in the front door of their home. What a Troy mother is telling CBS 6 after her child was caught in the crossfire. Tonight at 5. Dangerous drivers on Capital Region roads. He's doing 98 and a 65. Getting a pass over and over. It's reduced to parking. That's outrageous. CBS 6 News investigates. They've proven they can't be responsible. Why so many repeat offenders are allowed behind the wheel. Again, Thursday on the CBS 6 News at 6. Protein powders, popular in morning smoothies. Buying these because to complement their already healthy lifestyle. But are some doing more harm than good? Over a hundred top selling powders tested. Are very well known carcinogens. Lead and mercury. CBS 6 News reveals the danger hiding in many popular protein powders. Tonight at 6. The fast and the funniest. Uh oh. I hit a squirrel or John Travolta's toupee. Either way, its legs are still moving. You don't give a fuck, you like me at home. You take her out, just show her around. Red light! <laughs> the Fast and the Funniest, tonight at 6 on The CW 15. Guess the answer. Everyone loves American blank. Spicy taco. Bark. Chicken cutlets, chicken cutlets. <laughs> Win the money. When you borrow the tequila, it's very hard to return it. Name something that some women never stop doing. Talking. He's the talker. He's the lawyer, not me. Two Cash hours of life with yeah. your favorite hosts, starting with America Says at 4, followed by Family Feud at 5. Today on the CW15. I normally don't bring coffee for the interviews, but <laughs> I thought that this was a special That's case. That's perfect. <laughs> every single bean goes on with tweezers, every single one on every single piece. And you'll see the further away you get from them, the clearer that they are. If you have to always get the expression, but well, you learn as you go. I've done some portraits of friends and animals. Even her local morning anchor, me. Betsy was nice enough to make this portrait. Can you believe it took her 36 hours? Yeah. So how sick of my face are you right now? <laughs> I feel like I know you already. You yeah. know, we, we spent a lot of time together. Yeah. Birch Family Farm has stood in Fort Ann for nearly three decades, but after a devastating fire on Sunday afternoon, this is all that remains. A hundred farm animals were killed in the fire. Now owner Richard Birch is trying to move forward. I feel bad about the animals, but things happen. He was working in the barn on Sunday afternoon when he noticed the flames. Ran and got a fire extinguisher. There was a hose that some pigs were using. I cut that off to put, get water. Smoke was pouring from the large barn, but Birch was focused on getting his animals out alive. They were all screaming and they were laying down trying to get out of the heat, right? That thing was hot. His daughter even trying to release the milk cows into the pasture. Open the gate and put them out that way, but they all ran back. She got them out, didn't get hurt. But nothing could save the animals. Some piglets were able to squeeze out and at least two are still on the loose. Come catch the pig! Birch says now the work to rebuild begins. It's all gone. We don't have no insurance, but we're tough. We're gonna go on, clean it up, and start over. He says farming is in his blood, and at 71 years old, he's not planning to retire anytime soon. Sit in the chair, waiting to die. I don't want to do that. I'd rather die out here on the tractor. The surviving pigs are being kept in his daughter's barn, and Birch has put most of the surviving milk cows up for auction. Birch says the farm suffered a fire about 20 years ago. They rebuilt then and plan to do the same now. We worked hard to keep this place, so we're going to give it up. And although most of the farm is still blackened and burned, some things were able to remain untouched. And Birch says he will use those things to find a way to move forward. I'm reporting in Fort Ann, Ayla Farone, News 10, ABC.
A life lost tragically in the line of duty today, Trooper Timothy Pratt was remembered as a friend to all. Dozens of state police motorcycles escorted Trooper Timothy Pratt's casket to St. Michael's Church in South Glens Falls today for a final goodbye. Every day of my father's entire life, he was the hero of heroes. His daughter Sarah remembering her father's laugh and loving nature during his funeral. He didn't just greet you with a polite nod and smile or raise a glass and nod. You know, he got up from his seat and he hugged you or he shook your hand or threw handcuffs on you or pepper sprayed you. Others remembering Trooper Pratt's love of the job and his love of the community he worked in. He enjoyed people. He enjoyed making contact with people. Uh, and he was renowned for that. Always ready to lend a hand to those in need and a role model to younger troopers on the force. More than a thousand state troopers and law enforcement members from across the country came to honor him and remember how he always left people feeling good about themselves and with a smile on their faces. He's the type of guy that when he would arrest you, as you're walking out the door, the, the defendant would think that he won a trip to Disney. He was, he was that good. Pratt was a great guy. Following the funeral, Trooper Pratt was escorted by a motorcade to his final resting place at Saratoga National Cemetery. I'm reporting in Wilton, Ayla Farone, News 10, ABC. Well, Liana, what more can you say about Ian Anderson? As you know, this kid is as humble as they come. When he got picked, he was clearly happy. His parents were emotional. He thanked them afterwards. And now he gets to follow in the same footsteps as Hall of Famers Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, and John Smoltz. Shenandoah senior pitcher Ian Anderson waited just 24 minutes for the best announcement of his life. With the third selection in the 2016 MLB draft, the Atlanta Braves select Ian Anderson, the right-handed pitcher from Shenandoah High School in Clifton Park, New York. It's just something that, that you dream about and uh, to see it finally you know, come true and probably even better than I dreamed about, uh, it, it's special. Anderson says he knew about 25 minutes before the draft the Braves would take him and that Atlanta's always been interested, but it picked up after he threw 16 strikeouts in the state regional last weekend. And my friend, you come front and say, we move over just a touch so we see some Braves. And because Ian was taken third overall, he's now the highest draft pick in Section 2 history, something he says he's extremely proud of. It just goes to show you how, how good the baseball is in Section 2 and how much better it's even getting. That's wonderful. I'm so <laughs> excited for him. I know parents just want to see their kids' dreams come true, and your, your kid just had his dream come true. I mean, what, what does that mean to you guys? He's worked so hard to get here and uh, to see this happen tonight and unfold like this. It was just incredible. I'm really looking forward to watching him go forward. I know you grew up a Red Sox fan, but did you have an NL East team? Or did you, were the Braves ever like a favorite of yours? Not really, no. Uh, but I mean, I guess now they, they're my favorite team. I think you have to say that. So um, I'm excited. And so Ian says he's going to enjoy this tonight and tomorrow night before he's got to get ready for another baseball game at the high school level as Shen gets set to play in Binghamton on Saturday in the state semis. One more thing, though. He says he's really proud that he got to share this night with his twin brother, Ben, and he says he would not be surprised if his name gets called in the MLB draft. In Secaucus, New Jersey, Josh Rotenberg, News 10, ABC.